It's Mo Classified. I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Johans Miles. For those who don't know, I don't know why they wouldn't know, but please introduce yourself. Give us a list and rundown of your credentials. All right, good stuff. Um, first, thank you no for, um, for, for this interview, Mo. Um, Johans Miles, I think I re see recently I have uh, containment on the CW. I played Dennis on that show. Uh, you can catch me on the AMC Into the Badlands as Ringo. Um, we have right now, I'm currently working on a project I'm in North Carolina. I can't talk much about it, okay. um, but let's just say um, it includes big names, Sanaa Lathan, okay. Ellen Hunt, uh, Stefan James from the movie Race. So definitely um, a film rather than a series. It's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a TV series, oh, and okay. so um, and it's called Shots Fired, okay. um, which is fun. Um, what's Sanaa Lathan? It's cool. Yeah. Uh, but um, outside of that, I see I've, I've done This Is The End, Two Guns. Hours, you know, work on that with uh, Paul Walker. I've um, been quite busy, so you know, hey, if you if you get a chance to IMDb me, mm -hmm. check me out, you know, Johan yeah. Smiles. Okay, so was this is the end your first movie ever, or what was your first movie? Oh, my first actual movie. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can remember right, I think it was a television show called Kville. Okay. And that was Anthony. Um, what is it? Uh, Anthony. What's the comedian name? Um, Anderson? Anderson, yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, forgive me, Anthony, because we worked together. Yes. Um, uh, that, right after, I think it was once said post Katrina. Okay. They came out with that. And then my very first movie, honestly, was. Um, <clears throat> that was like a big project. Yeah. It could, it may have been this movie. I think I've been doing a lot of TV stuff here lately, right, you know, right, that right. it's hard to keep track of what movies and television shows. Um, but it has to be between Revenge of the Bride Maze with Raven Simone uh -huh. or another project. But okay. yeah. Okay. And then from that first project period, mm -hmm. how have you grown as an actor to now being a character on containment? Oh, um, that is actually a great question. Uh, we try to, we would like which with anything that you do, mm -hmm. track your matriculation in, in, in your work. Okay. Um, but for the most part, I think I've grown tremendously, whereas where I would, uh, my first movie, there it is, okay. I was an extra in Stump the Yard. Okay. That's right. And that's Megan them. Good, Brian White, all yeah. those cats, you Columbus know, Columbus Shore. Shore. Yeah. And I uh, went to the movie theater and I'm thinking extra, you know, hey, you know how the camera was on me? I'm thinking they're going to see me in the movie theater. Yeah. And Got a lot I'm, of cameo. No, I, I didn't get is. anything. <laughs> not a back of the head, no. not that's my fingernail. Right, I didn't get right, nothing. Right. But um, that from that extra role, and I was in school at the time, working on a degree uh, in theater at Alabama State University. Okay. Whoop, whoop, HBCUs. It's my issue. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, and I told myself, I said, Well, wait a minute. Why am I, why am I in school, learning to say things, tell stories? And I was an extra on set and sat there for 12, 13 hours to not say anything. So right. it made, doesn't make any sense. So I made a vow to myself. All right, if you get this degree, which it did, uh, your job is to work. So I went from that to one-liners, and then one-liners, which led to you know uh, a scene, and then a scene leads to guest starring roles. And now you know I'm at a place in my career where I have you know a series of characters on television shows, yes. and I'm holding my weight now with other big people, who some of them are actually watching them in movies, mm -hmm. but now I'm working alongside with them, and it's kind of like. You know, uh, no offense or to any disrespect to any of them, because they're great people, but I'm like, wow, you're working with me too. Yes, exactly. You're working together, so it's, it's really fun. So right. I actually can say I've grown a right. lot. Definitely. A I lot. feel like that's how it should be. Like, you're working with your aunt's mouth. <laughs> yeah. Good I'm stuff. not just working with you. Uh -huh. But let's see, let's see. From, you know, outside looking in, mm -hmm. acting might just seem like acting to everybody, but right. what's the biggest difference between a feature film style acting compared mm -hmm. to TV series, TV series style acting? Um, well, since I do theater, film, and television, and they can happen simultaneously, right. um, they all share one medium, which is you're talking to, you, you, you're conveying a story to an audience, all right? But with film and television, they are, uh, slightly approach differently. Uh, film, you get the concrete schedule, at least I know I'll be working for a month or two months, um, and though film is, is shot out of order, uh -huh. 
So you're all over the place. You know, you can wake up at 2, 3 in the morning, be on set, your call time to go is at 5.45, and you're starting with the most emotional scene probably of that day, you know? You're like, wait a minute, I'm like, can I warm up to this, you know? And television, um, it's a whole lot faster. It's, it, it, it's kind of have a fast pace to it. And then you're working not only just with one director, it depends on the episodes, you get different directors in each episode who want something different with the vision, the overall vision of the show, but they bring something uniquely different. So that's kind of um, the difference between the two, you know? Uh, it's fast and one, you, get, you gotta get a product done a certain amount of time. And television definitely works on the time. What is your ideal role or any specific person you like to play? Any specific character that you would like to represent? Um, I don't, I don't uh, have an ideal role. Okay. Though, I get asked that a lot. Like, you know, what is it that you have not yet played? I just want to stick with, I like to play characters that have, um, that can speak to a demographic of people in all areas, you know, spiritually, you know, uh, morally, and that these characters that I take on, that feel, that the energy of these characters feel like I'm the person that should be able to convey these stories, yeah. that they're stories that are authentic, that they're truthful. Um, I don't want to box myself into, I think I just want to, you know, my ideal great thing to do is to be this one thing, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, that's not real humanity, you know, it's right. not real life. Um, to just be one dimensional. We're not one dimensional people. Right, not at all. Uh, but it would be great. Um, I, I think I've been playing a lot of um, serious roles, okay. though my personality, with my friends and family, they say, dude, you're silly. You're like really this crazy, goofy guy. Right. But I think they, they, they like that. So they can show up at the movie theater and it's the most, it's, it, they can watch a show and it's really serious. And they, my, all my friends are cracking up joking. Like I'm on social media, like, what do you guys think about Dennis on Containment? What's gonna happen next episode? And they're making jokes. Right. Where I'm looking for like, you know, serious you know, some feedback. serious feedback. And they're like, man, get out of here, dude. Right. You know? We don't take this serious. <laughs> it's good stuff. But yeah, um, that, that will be uh, kind of my answer to that. And, um, uh, if I, I would like to work with, with uh, though I was in, in the same movie with him and, I, and we, we had our scenes shot um, that day together with Denzel, okay. I really would like to be in something with like, oh, like Don Cheeto. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Don Cheeto. Oh, uh, that, that's my guy there, man. Right. That's my guy. I would so love to be So that would be your ideal um, co Cold guy, you know, yeah. or, or even some people that I would assume that's in, in my league. I hear a lot of people, you know, and I have to remind myself, you know, there's, you know, it's not competition, but these are other people who are in my bracket right. of, of acting. Uh, I like to work with Anthony Mackie, you know, okay. uh, Columbus Short, uh, Brian White, and though Brian White, little do he know, at a red carpet event, he's like uh, a couple of uh, individuals down from me who's at the NWACP Image Award. Uh -huh. And you know, I'm right, it's Lisa Ray next to me, and there's Blair Underwood who I worked with before, and, right. and Brian White. And I'm like, this is the guy that's in my bracket. I'm like, hey, you know, let's hope do something. Right. So we just put that into the universe, you know. Brian, and come on, man. We'll be working with all of you yeah, very, brother. very soon. You know? <laughs> okay. What about is there a particular movie or scene mm -hmm. or character in a movie? Okay that made you want to pursue acting? Like after you saw that scene, or after you saw them yeah. put so much into that role, you were like, this is what I want to do with my life. By far, hands down, I'm pretty sure you might agree. Okay. All right? My mom's uh, extramarital affairs with Denzel. Okay, definitely. Okay? Yes. But Denzel in the movie Jump Q. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. When I saw Denzel in that movie, it was, it, it just really was, <sighs> he felt like my dad, right. you know? I felt saying. like if I even was world. in that situation, it's like, forget the character. I put myself in that story and said, if that was me, I think I would have done the same thing, exactly. you know? And it was just so organic. It didn't feel like acting. Right. I mean, uh, it was at least, I think at least, no, not at least, um, I'm trying to remember who played his wife. It's been a while since I've right. seen John Q. Um, I can't remember. I know her name. Please forgive me. Uh, but his wife, I believe that relationship uh, from the other actors who played his wife. I believe even everybody. I believe the people who worked at the hospital. I believe the the, 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 the other actor who was giving him a difficult time. Right. 
in trying to obtain this extra money or help him find the coverage to help heal his son, you know? Yeah, but I think... Overall struggle, yeah, we uh, felt it. When I saw that movie, yeah, that was it. I right. wanted to do work like that. Right, yeah. okay, that's a good one. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but I can see yeah, yeah. why you would jump into that role and just jump into all that passion that's that was right. there. Yeah, what about if you weren't an actor, what would you be doing with your life, honestly? Um, if I wasn't an actor, um, that's a difficult question to ask because, um, I mean, what, you know what, I, 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 I might, might have, could have been maybe a drummer. Okay. Because I'm I a percussionist. My mother had put me, she had all of us, me and my siblings, all of us were in like a concert band. So like she found, somehow she was very wise in trying to figure out. Um, some artistic form to put us in or right. engage our creativity, creativity yeah. you know. And get the artist in you. Right. Yeah. And, and, find, and she did a wonderful job at figuring out, okay, this form of art is a great piece for you to, to express yourself. Mm -hmm. So I was in a concert band. I played the timpanis, the xylophones, I was in a marching band, snare drums, all the percussion section. Then right. I taught myself how to play the drums at 12. Okay. So I think if I wasn't an actor, I think I would be a full time musician. Okay. Uh, really pursuing that. And at the end of the day, whether a musician or an actor, um, if I didn't have those titles, I just still think I will be doing exactly what we're doing right now. Just trying to, to find out who I am and how, how I exist into this world. Right, right, right. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. What about advice for people who want to be in your position, um, still trying to figure this industry out, you know? Uh, one, stop trying to figure out the industry. Um, it is what it is. You, you you know you can't keep running into people who keep giving you their uh, or keep seeing people struggle. You know what it takes to be on top and to be successful. That is what it is. It requires work. You know procrastination is something that uh, we all can have. You know um, at times. I would just encourage everybody and whatever. Let's just take acting out the picture. Okay. Yeah. Right. Any profession. any profession that you're in, right. any. Um, my words of advice would be to give it your all. Find the pursuit, again, of what you deem as happiness and success. Mm -hmm. uh, understand that the title of career is something that you already had. I, I, my, I, no, I teach students at a university, and so um, the question of the day when I first come to my class is, um, okay, so what's the difference between a career and a job? And so they go through all these answers. and. And, and this is my belief. I believe our careers started when we were born. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't choose your parents. They just were who they are, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's the jump start of your career right. as a child, being born in somewhere into, into a family, learning these people, them learning you, sending you to the schools that you went to, making all the friends that you made, right. you know, all the many jobs that you had. Yes. All this is just your career track. Right. Um, now, within your career, you can acquire many jobs. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to find a passion behind that one, find a passion in that one thing that you truly say, it, you say to yourself, can I wake up and do this if there's no money on the line? I mean, of course, you, nothing is for free. You gotta survive. But if there was nothing else, I actually enjoy waking up doing this. Exactly. And you know? have a natural talent or ability to yeah. do it. Yeah. And have the ability to do it, right. you know? Uh, and there's no thought process of retirement in it. It's just kind of, I just would die right. with this. I have to. You know? Yeah. yeah. I just would die doing this one thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's my advice. Learn more. Stay, stay uh, prepared. Um, you, you can't ask or want to deem yourself to have opportunities when you're not prepared. You know? Um, I myself, as much as I teach out, I put myself in workshops. Right. I think I heard Denzel say that, you know? Yeah. And people ask him, what do you do? He said, I still go to workshops. Right. Although a lot of what he does, he, he mentions, uh, that he learned from people, his interaction with people. Uh -huh. That's still putting the work. Yes. You know, um, you can't you can't proclaim to be an actor and an actress to me, and you don't have the personality and you don't have that interactive skills to come behind. Right, and you need those real life experiences yeah. to be able to bring it back to the experience you're trying to portray. If you are an introvert and you feel like you do not want to go through any anything that you call the human experience, mm -hmm. then you know, change your idea of what I would assume you would call acting or wanting to pursue acting, you know? Because okay. it requires you to interact with people. 
No matter how, you can't escape that. That's just with any occupation. Right, yeah. Um, know who you are, um, stand for what you stand for, don't compromise. Uh, compromising is, you know, is something that uh, we all will face in the encounter and you just want to make sure that you are really strong, strong for something. And when you, when I, what I mean by that is you need to believe in something. Right. You need a purpose. Yeah. You need something that you yeah. stand for. Yeah. So you got to stand for something. Yes. Yeah. We ain't capping it with just no spirituality. We're talking about something. What do you believe in? And exactly. you stand on it. Exactly. You know, even if you say, hey, this is what floats my boat and bubble gum is pink. Yes. If that's I'm what not it going is, I'm not going yeah. against it, you know? Uh, and if, that, well, if that's what you believe, stand firm on it. Right. Yeah. Okay. What about advice for your 21 year old self? <laughs> what would you be telling? That young man. The advice I would give to my 21-year-old self, uh, Johans, would be um, you're, at the, you're at the right place in your life. Okay. This is the best place you could ever be. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You're at the best place you could ever be. Right. Um, now, here's the difference. The 21-year-old Johans, at the time I was 21, um, America is top, top heavy with advancement in technology medical practices, we have access to anything that we want to. I mean, even when you look at, you know, how people can really put out their creativity more, more so than ever, you know, YouTube, Snapchat, you know, whatever you got, you got a streamline that you can really say, no one can't say, I just, you know, I'm waiting to be, I'm ready, I'm ready to be something. I'm waiting for people to see me. You got that. Yes. That 21 year old Johans back then, I would tell him, you know, definitely, you're the best place where you are because you're working it towards through things to earn it, to appreciate it. Definitely. If I was the 20 old Johans that would be right now, fast forward, mm -hmm. take full advantage of everything that you got. Yes. <laughs> There's no excuse. You have right everything now. you need. Definitely. Versus the Johans, the real 21 year old Johans several years ago. Right. Yeah. That's what I would tell that guy that man. Okay. Well, anything else in particular that you want to tell the people? Maybe something we should be looking forward to? Anything. Just give us some last words, some inspirational words. Um, I, I think where, where I am now, um, something just to think about in your, in your path is uh, understanding the many variations of, of temptations. And, and what I mean by that is we all want to be successful people. Uh, whether you are virtuous cocaine bank or whatever and, and but but we all want to be successful to a certain degree but with that extent with that knowledge uh, comes to take temptations and um, temptations is our greatest weakness so just just find out how to maneuver and to accept everything every challenge you know and work through it Definitely. yeah learn you good stuff Definitely. Yeah. yes I yeah, your hunts learn you too. Yes. <laughs> you heard it. You learn you. you know, I'm still learning me too. I yeah. definitely am. That is, I'm telling you, I'm not the same 15 year old Johans. You know, they, they got it was 15. The, the way I thought of 15 was, was the way I thought of 15 and right. the way I thought of when I was 25. You know, I mean, um, I am at this place in my life now and I have to learn, not figure out, learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm okay with each day that goes by with right. learning me. Yeah. And the test might continue to come, but eventually right. you just gotta pass it. Yeah, That's figure right. it out, pass yeah. it, learn. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for oh, sitting down you. with us and giving us those inspirational words and just the inside perspective of who Johans really is Good stuff. off the screen. Yeah. But um. One more thing, can I say one thing? Yes, yeah, listen, listen. Um, if you are an actor and actress out there, and I say this because I am a family guy at the same time, uh -huh. um, again, don't live your dreams through your children. Uh, make sure you understand that these individuals are uniquely different as you are and also make your family and your children a part of your dreams so that at the end of the day and I say this to my sons um, is that you would never ever be able to tell your dad I never had an example you know just because they you know I, I had my sons and definitely at an early age you know I was 21 um, uh, when they get older they can't say that they didn't have an example you know, right. they were never the fault. You know, they were even more so the reason the why I should show them my dreams and pursue them. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> for those last words. Y'all heard it here first. Mo Classified, Johans Miles. Thank you again. We're out of here, guys. <laughs>